I'm going to be running through the Space Shuttle Ultra checklist. We, at the moment, we're at T-minus 9 minutes, so most of the things have been already pre-configured for us, such as the engine power and the helium isolation. Um, but at T-minus 6 minutes and 15 seconds, we do an APU pre-start, which is just a precursor to the actual APU startup at T minus five minutes, and it just ensures that everything's in place for the startup whenever that comes in line. So what we want to do, I'm going to go ahead and run through that. Is check the boiler nitrogen supply, make sure it's on. The boiler controller, all that should be on. Boiler controller, power and heater, all should be on or switch to A position. Um, hydraulic circulation pump should be at GPC, which is middle position. The APU fuel tank valve, all three should be closed. Um, the APU auto shutdown should be enabled. APU speed select should be normal. APU control, all of them should be off, which is this middle position over here. Um, hydraulic main pump pressure, all three should be low, so we switch that to low. APU controller power, all should be on. APU fuel tank valve, on. Okay, we were just wondering that. Here's auto on the These table. These will black out. Um, and after they're blacked out, that just gives us an indication that the APU and hydraulic systems are ready to start. 15 minutes, 5 minutes, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. So we go to the AP control, we click start, or move it to the start position. Then we go to the CRT monitor and check that the hydraulic pressure is at 900 PSI, which is showing us it is. So that's good. Alright, next we switch the hydraulic main pump pressure to normal. And that's going to increase the PSI to 3000, and we want to check that. So it's steadily climbing to 3000, which is what we want. After it reaches 3000, we're going to turn the circulation pump to off, which we're going to do right now. Oops. Okay. Um, that's pretty much it. It's just, it's pretty rudimentary for real life, but it's probably one of the most um, interactive and advanced simulators out there that will allow one person to do such a thing that I am. I mean, it's not often where you have space flight simulators, so it is pretty good for what is out on the market right now, and not to mention it is free, so it's really good. Um, so what we're going to do next is wait till launch time I mean I can pick that right now in a minute in an hour but I'll do that in about 40 seconds and what most people have the misconception okay we'll terminate the uh, spy dump using fest at uh, 2145 and then we'll go back to the buyout somebody's Thanks, 2245. The joystick which isn't necessarily the case the space shuttle is launched with an autopilot program which, you know, handles everything for them. They don't have to worry much except for telemetry and communications and things of that nature. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and launch the shuttle. For ignition and liftoff of Atlantis on a mission to study planet Earth.
and docking with the International Space Station or any other station that might be up there, but each, each spacecraft has its own flight profile and um, data, and so it's just up to the astronauts essentially to to that because they got to go. And how about a right waist tether to the Ford UIAD ring? That's complete good, close up lock. Thank you. All right. Um, next event that's going to happen is SRB separation. And you'll start to notice that these contrails get really thin. And right after that, the SRBs will separate. And it'll just be the space shuttle and the external fuel tank. So that should happen quite soon. Okay, here comes the 1222 to 1223 time frame. Copy. All right, SRB separation is good. burn, my own is one burn. Um, it really depends on what the mission is because for the International Space Station it's somewhere around 360 kilometers that we need to reach and so we might have a higher initial apogee and perigee but for other missions such as retrieving satellites or deploying satellites you want those at a higher altitude so he's on the LDI key card step four just checking the first thing config copy change different variables such as the vertical speed but the next event that will happen would be the ET separation and shortly after that we'll do a translation to separate ourselves and give us some distance between the space shuttle and the external fuel tank. You can see Florida's down there. Watch from Cape Canaveral, there's Cuba, Central America, East Coast. Only takes roughly eight minutes to reach space and to attain a stable orbit.
very soon. Here we go. Correction, the, um, we are going to do an APU shutdown, then we're going to transition to OPS-5, and we're going to power down the main engines, and close the external tank umbilical doors, and then while we're in orbit, we're going to do our ohms burn. Alright, like I said, we're doing our translation right now. Okay. And our eccentricity is 0 .0113. Our apogee is 203 kilometers. And our Houston, if you like that attitude, me, we load it in. We'll give you the item 19. That should be at least okay. above we'll hold off and maneuver on your call. Or by the time we reach it, we are going to be in the atmosphere, and it won't be pretty. So let's go ahead and do the APU and hydraulic shutdown. APU auto shutdown should be enabled. Boiler control and boiler nitrogen supply should be off. APU control, one through three, should be off, and we do a five second interval between each. All right, once that's off, we check to ensure that the APU fill tank valves are closed, and then, right then and there, the hydraulic pressure should be less than 200 PSI. Which it is, so that's good. And then we turn the APU controller power off and change, or check that the hydraulic main pump pressure is at normal. Which that's good, and power off and we will transition to ops 105 